Good morning. My name is Reverend Leslie Goodwin, and I'm one of the senior ministers here at New Vision Center for Spiritual Living. And in addition to Jeff, it is also my honor to welcome you all to this beautiful place. Whether you are here in the sanctuary with us or whether you are watching online, please know that you are wanted, you are loved exactly the way you are. And the songs today have me already crying. So there's fair warning. It's a Leslie crying day. The first thing that set me off, believe it or not, was Spirit Song, which is based on a traditional Negro spiritual. And the line, can't hate your neighbor with your mind set on spirit brought me to tears this morning. It's why we put so much energy into considering ourselves a radically inclusive community and why we put so much energy into talking about it. Because when you are radically inclusive, when you choose to see the divine truth of every being in front of you, even if they believe differently, even if they're from a different place, even if they love differently than you do, or any of the other kinds of things that can serve to act as a divider between peoples, when you choose to see the divine truth of them and connect on that level, mm, it's the truest kind of revealing the power of love that I know. So I welcome you all into that practice with us. So my talk title today is The Freedom of Self-Care. And this is an interesting topic for me because this is both the first time I've ever put forward a talk title in, I don't know, the three years that I've been talking here, that multiple people have said, that's a weird title. What do freedom and self-care have to do with each other, you strange little lady? <laughs> and on the flip side, this is the first time I've gotten multiple emails from congregants after reading the opening letter of the newsletter in which we talk about whatever the Sunday topic is going to be, saying, I'm so excited for this topic. So apparently we are up for talking about the freedom of self-care however weird it may get. I love that Daniel chose the song, Get Ready My Soul. First of all, it's one of my favorite songs in the whole world, um, and I could never, ever get tired of it. But that idea that here I go, deeper, deeper, deeper than I've ever been before, to the deepest kind of love, to the sweetest kind of life. Because to me... That's what true self-care is. It's loving yourself as an expression of the divine, so much so that you wouldn't ever dream of not giving yourself whatever it is that you need to feel whole and perfect and complete in the moment. And how many of us are so good at always doing that every time? Yeah, I'm totally lying. My hand's up, but I'm lying. We are really bad at it. As a, as a people, as a community, as a culture, we're notoriously terrible at taking care of ourselves. So how did I come to combine these two concepts? I was in a meeting. Frankly, all my stories could probably begin. I was in a meeting. I'm in a meeting, and Reverend Karen says, and after we're done with the visioning process, we should probably start talking about Christmas. And that's exactly the right timing to do that, right? If you know the ecclesiastical calendar, if you live in the United States and have been raised with these holidays, yep, if you're going to do something big in December, you better start planning it in July. And something in me went, no, no. Because I have this dialogue in my head that says, when things slow down, I will da 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 And here's the truth, y'all. It's never going to slow down. This community in particular is never going to slow down, right? There's never going to be a time when you guys all turn to me and say, let's just take the month off. We don't need services or classes or meetings or workshops or prayer time or emails or newsletters, right? In fact, what I get is, you know what we should do? 
Or more to the point, you know what you guys should do? <laughs> and it's always a fantastic idea, and of course we always want to act on it, and sometimes part of me goes, no. Just because it's another thing. In our teaching, we have this document um, called, well, we call it the What We Believe Statements, but truly it's called the Declaration of Principles. And it's a document that Ernest Holmes wrote early on in the development of this teaching because somebody asked him, so what do you believe? Which was a pretty good question. And one of the phrases in that declaration is, we believe in the complete freedom from discord of every nature and that everyone is sure to arrive. Everyone is sure to accomplish this. Freedom from discord of every nature. That's a bold statement. So what is freedom? If we're looking for moving away from discord of every nature, my favorite definition of freedom is that freedom is the state that is present for us when all of the other God qualities are in place. When there's abundance, enough that we don't have to focus on that. When there's balance, when there's beauty in our life, power, peace, order, wholeness, wisdom, joy, and love, and unity. When all of those are active in our lives to the degree that we need them to be to feel good, that is the sense of freedom. Yeah? And when we don't feel free, when we feel like there's a sense of bondage or slavery or stuckness or trappedness, it's always because one of those qualities is not balanced for us, right? We feel stuck because we can't pay our bills. We feel stuck because we're lonely. We feel stuck because we don't know what to do. That's abundance. That's unity and love. That's wisdom. The good news is we have the capacity to do something about it. Every one of us is probably sitting in our chairs right now feeling at least a little bit in bondage to something going on in our life. Yeah? Do you want to stay there? I mean, you can. Free will and all. You totally can. If you're that person, go ahead and turn on your phone. I understand that Wimbledon is still happening right now. I am sure that Reverend Karen gave you the same freedom last week when the U.S. women's team won the World Cup. Okay, maybe not. But that's just because she was born in Germany. If the German women had been, uh, you better believe. Send in lots of love to Reverend Karen on her Sunday off. Self-care is doing or not doing whatever it takes for you to flourish. And I would argue that in order to flourish, we can't feel like we're held in bondage to something that's holding us back. We have a lot of ideas about what we think self-care are and what we think it's not. But here's, here's a set of st tough statistics. 45% of Americans lay awake at night because of stress. Maybe stress over different things, but that feeling of stress. And it's estimated that 80% of Americans right now would clinically qualify for a diagnosis of depression. That does not feel like freedom to me. The great sage Anonymous, one of my favorite writers, <laughs> reminds us that an empty lantern provides no light. Self-care is the fuel that allows your light to shine brightly. When your light is shining brightly, you feel free. So there are three things we need for true self-care. The first one is to know ourselves. If the lamp, if the fuel for the lamp is doing whatever lights us up, we better know what lights us up, right? It's different for every person. Then we have to have the tools, and then we have to actually do it. So that's what we're going to talk about. 
knowing ourselves, what lights me up? The thing that I hear the most often when I recommend self-care, because, you know, physician, heal thyself, right? The thing that I hear the most is, I don't like massages. I don't want people to touch my feet. Because there's this idea that self-care is a spa day. Now, for me, self-care might be a spa day. But for people, not necessarily, if you don't like a massage and you don't want people to touch your feet, pick something else. Ernest Holmes, the, teacher, the founder of our teaching, said, you are a center where life, passing through you, becomes definite, unique, distinct, and individual. You are a divine original. Whatever lights you up is original, different from anybody else. Even if you are going with me on spa day, odds are there's some part of you that makes the action feel differently for you, light you up in a different way. We're all unique individuals. Yes, there is unity, but unity is not the same thing as sameness. So hopefully that just helped you unlock about half of the excuses you have about self-care and just they just fell away, right? Whatever your mom thinks self-care is, whatever your best friend thinks it is, whatever that article in Vogue said, we're free, yes? If you want to know what lights you up, look at what you value. If you want to know what you value, look at how you spend your time. If you don't like that quote that I just made up, it's a quote from me, Reverend Leslie Goodwin. If you don't like what I just said, maybe you need to look at how you spend your time. I don't know that I would say that I deeply value binge watching Veronica Mars on Netflix, but you would think I did based on what I did yesterday. There's a new season coming out, y'all. I got to remind myself. If what you say you value is not showing up on your calendar, it's time for a change. I'm willing to bet if what you say you value is not showing up on your calendar that you do not feel free right now. Self-care is aligning is creating congruence between who we want to be and who we are actually walking out. Whatever that looks like for you, and it'll be different for all of us. It has to be different for all of us. Those 80% of people that could be diagnosed with depression, one of the leading things that point to this issue is a lack of self-purpose in people's lives. You know what they prescribe for that largely? You're going to love this. Spiritual practice. Those of you who are new, they're laughing because I literally talk about this every single talk. Spiritual practice. And I don't mean religious practice. It doesn't matter what you believe. That place of getting quiet, of knowing thyself, maybe journaling, maybe meditation, maybe prayer if that's what works for you, or some combination therein. Vibrational sound healing every fourth Wednesday night at, at service. It's there for you. Service before the Sunday service, we have a meditation in here. It's here for you. If you're not feeling connected, if you're not feeling free, it's time to step into the tools that are there to help us figure out who the heck we are. Because odds are, if you're not feeling a sense of purpose and you're not feeling connected, you don't know yet. Maybe you're looking back at the you that you were when you were 19 and you made that first bucket list. Maybe you're looking at the you that your parents think you're supposed to be, or your spouse, or the professors in your college, or your boss, or your minister, or your other minister. <laughs> but if you don't feel free, if you don't feel lit up from the inside, you're supporting a you that isn't you, and that isn't serving anyone.
My favorite place to learn about how to step into these spiritual practices is foundations class. It's an 11-week class that we offer periodically here at New Vision Center where we talk about the foundations of science of mind, so the basics of the teaching, as well as meditation and mindfulness and affirmative prayer and journaling and all these practices that we can use to know thyself. And conveniently, a new class of it is starting on July 25th, and it's being co-taught by Reverend Karen and myself. If there's a part of you right now where your excuse is, I don't know how to do that. Yeah, I hear it a lot. I don't know how to meditate. I don't know how to speak an affirmative prayer. I'm not buying it, y'all. We have a class for that. <laughs> Maybe we need to have an app for that. <laughs> Come join us in foundations class. One of the things that we learn is that, that the last big excuse, which is, I don't have time. I'm not the important one. I need to serve everybody else. I have 92 children. I have 92 children. I get it. And when you say, I don't have time for self-care, what you're really saying is, I don't matter. I don't matter. Everybody else matters. Mark matters. Karen matters. Bobby matters. I don't matter. That's a tough pill to swallow, right? But what we learn in foundations, I know, pills are hard to swallow. I hear you, man. <laughs> what we learn in foundations is that we are each a unique and perfect expression of the divine. So when we're saying we're not worth it, I'm not worth it, we're saying God in this form is not worth it. Would you ever say that? You would never say it about God, right? You probably never say it about me, right? Except for apparently that person over there. <laughs> if you wouldn't say it to someone you love, if you wouldn't say it to someone you don't even know, why would you think it about yourself? We spend 11 weeks exploring this idea that we are expressions of the divine, that we are, in fact, divine. That there's nothing else to be. God is all there is. That's the heart of science of mind right there. And then we spend 11 weeks learning to believe it, learning to walk it out. Okay, so we've got the tools. We figured out who we are. We've got the values in place. We're aligned. We're ready, right? Now we have to actually do it. To actually do it. There is no value to planning a wonderful me day of taking your grandchildren to the baseball game or napping for a really long time. A bunch of people have told me what their spiritual or what their favorite self-care practices are. Of swimming in the pool with the unicorn and the grandkids. There's no point of planning that if you then erase it out of your calendar because something more important shows up, like a work shift or doing the dishes. It's just me, right? I'm the only one that bumps self-care as soon as something more important shows up. Yep, yep I am, I'm the only one. I, I knew that. I knew that about myself. So we have to plan it. First of all, who even plans? Okay, a spa day you do have to plan, but who plans three hours to myself? Jean gets bonus points. Then you have to actually schedule it in, as in like write it in your date book. I just aged myself very clearly right there. <laughs> write it in your date book, right? And then you have to not erase it. Not, you have to prioritize it. You have to matter as much as the other people in your life. You have to matter more. We all know the cliches. It's not like this is new news, this idea that you have to put your own oxygen mask on first. They say that in the airplane, in case you've missed this logic, that you put your own oxygen mask on first because if you don't, you will pass out while you're helping the person you're helping instead of you, and then nobody gets oxygen. 
you have to put you first. It is not selfish. If you don't take care of you, you cannot help anybody. I am walking this out so loud and proud in front of y'all as I learn how to balance this chronic illness that I'm living with, working with. Because if I pass out, y'all get out of church early because there's nobody to speak a sermon. Now, I need a better example than that. That sounds too good. <laughs> if I get sick to the point where I can't do this anymore, y'all are down a minister. My kids don't have, my five kids don't have mom or stepmom who's ready to step in when they need it. My parents don't have someone to drive them to that, I keep being assured, very low-key, minimal hip replacement surgery. Right? And it's true in your life. There are people who count on you. There are processes that you are required for. And if you don't take care of you, you will not be there to do them. The universe will step in. I am saddened to tell you. If you don't get your head wrapped around this, the universe will step in and force it. Perhaps that's why I'm experiencing this particularly lovely expression of autoimmune disorder is to walk out for everybody to watch. This is what it looks like when you think you can work a full-time job, volunteer a full-time job, and go to grad school at the same time with teenagers in the house. You get sick. It's not good. My husband is laughing in the front row. I think he's just excited that I finally noticed. Whatever you do, whatever you don't do, because setting boundaries and taking breaks is just as important. It's necessary for your survival. And the good news is, it's okay if we check out of the things that we think people need us to do. We can step out of a whole bunch of it, and the world will not collapse. The writer Anne Lamott, who I just love, said, almost everything will work again if you unplug it, including you. So check in with those values. Figure out what lights you up and what doesn't. Shift how you spend your energy. You don't want to go to that thing? Don't go to the thing. Or you think you have to go to the thing? Go for a little while, then go home. My trick is to sneak out without saying goodbye. It takes them a really long time to notice you're gone. <laughs> then you can lie and say, oh, no, I was there. You just couldn't find me. <laughs> Should not have said that in front of y'all. Really anchor into the tools. Really anchor into the tools. Take advantage of all the ways this community supports your spiritual practice. And then make yourself a priority. This is the call to action. Write those in like it's an appointment with your boss and honor it like it's that essential. Because it is. You are worth it. You are worth it. And so it is. Let's anchor that into prayer. As I breathe into this space of absolute goodness, absolute wholeness, absolute perfection, surrounded by these beloved beings, everyone within the sound of my voice, and what I know about myself and each one of us is that we are God in form, spirit in form, infinite intelligence in form. That the only way for this divinity that is called life to show up is by individuating as each one of us. And so I am a yes for treating our bodies and our lives like the divine temple that they truly are. I am knowing for each one of us ample time, abundant energy, and a deep willingness to settle in, to know our own values, and to live a life that reflects them profoundly. To know that the love that we are shows up as loving ourselves as much as we love one another. And to know that that simply deepens. That in the quiet space of spiritual practice that we are each up-leveled to fully understand the truth of our own nature. And that as we feel more free because we've released the bondage. As we feel more free. There is a peace and a quiet 
at the very center of our being that is true freedom. This is what I know for each one of us, and I call it good. And so it is.